And when we look back at the Esther year, it was a miraculous journey. Lot of people were touched by the Lord. The Lord heard our prayers. It was a journey of consolation every time and we will be witnesses for that. Every time we came and spent this time with the Lord, we were consoled. It was a journey of consolation. It was a journey of strengthening. And it was a journey of peace. How many times we had sat before the Eucharistic Lord disturbed, confused, troubled, without knowing what to do, worried about our health, worried about our family, worried about our children. And the Lord has filled us with peace, a journey of peace. We ask the same thing, nothing else like the disciples of Emmaus, a beautiful prayer they placed in front of the Lord. Lord, stay with us. Nothing else. The prayer is very beautiful, very simple, yet very deep. Stay with us. We want to have that miraculous journey with you once again. Let this year be a year of your miracles. You touching people. You healing people. It was a journey of healing. And let this journey be a journey of consolation once again. Every time I am down, I should be reminded of you that you are waiting for me in the Eucharist. And find consolation in you instead of searching it anywhere else, in anybody else. Definitely things will trouble us, things will disturb us. We will be worried, we will be down and whenever we come in your presence, we need that peace the peace that you have promised. And let this journey be a journey of strengthening once again. Every time we are weak, we want to go away from you. We get tired of our spiritual journey, tired of our life, tired of our work or business or misunderstandings. We want you to strengthen us and help us to walk once again. Dear Jesus,
are in the glorious season of Easter. We are in the presence of the risen Lord. And as He is meeting us today, He is telling each one of us, Peace be with you. Let us open our hearts and minds to the gift of peace that Christ is giving us. Let us accept the risen Lord into our lives. Let us accept that Jesus is the biggest wonder of our life. He is very kind to us. He loves us. He cares for us. And we are in the presence of our loving Lord. We thank Jesus for this beautiful moment that the Lord has given us to be with Him today once again. To be in His presence once again. And for this great opportunity to fill our hearts with the peace of the Lord. Dear Jesus, as we have come into your presence, manifest yourself as you manifested yourself to the apostles after the resurrection. And with your meeting, they were strengthened. They were clear in their thoughts. They could win all their fears and anxiety. We draw inspiration from the Apostles to meet you and to get inspired by you. Let this time of adoration be a time of meeting with you. A time wherein you strengthen us with your peace. Be with us, Lord, and guide us, and strengthen us, and lead us on your path. We make this prayer in your mighty name. Amen. Kindly be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, and my dear children in Christ. After the Easter last year, we began this beautiful time of adoration every Friday. Before that, it was not there. And what a joy that we have journeyed with the Lord one year. After the Easter last year, we began this beautiful practice of Friday adoration, Friday devotion to the Eucharistic Lord. First year when I came, we did not have. And last year, we introduced, as I was preparing for the adoration, that is what I was thinking. Last year, after the Easter, we announced it and we began this beautiful journey with the Eucharistic Lord. And when we look back at the Easter year, it was a miraculous journey. Lot of people were touched by the Lord. The Lord heard our prayers. It was a journey of consolation every time and we will be witnesses for that. Every time we came and spent this time with the Lord, we were consoled. It was a journey of consolation. It was a journey of strengthening. The Lord has strengthened us throughout the last year. Every Friday we met Him in our weakness, in our fears, in our tears and He strengthened us and made us strong once again. And it was a journey of peace. How many times we had sat before the Eucharistic Lord disturbed, confused, troubled, without knowing what to do, 
worried about our health, worried about our family, worried about our children. And the Lord has filled us with peace, a journey of peace. It was such a wonderful journey with the Lord. And today we are here to thank the Lord for this, for that beautiful year that we spent. And as we begin this journey once again after the Easter with the risen Lord, we ask the same thing, nothing else like the disciples of Emmaus, a beautiful prayer they placed in front of the Lord. Lord, stay with us. Nothing else. The prayer is very beautiful, very simple, but yet very deep. Stay with us. We want to have that miraculous journey with you once again. Let this year be a year of your miracles. You touching people. You healing people. It was a journey of healing. And let this journey be a journey of consolation once again. Every time I am down, I should be reminded of you that you are waiting for me in the Eucharist. And find consolation in you instead of searching it anywhere else, in anybody else. Let this time be it. Let this year once again be a journey of peace. Definitely things will trouble us. Things will disturb us. We will be worried. We will be down. And whenever we come in your presence, we need that peace. The peace that you have promised. The peace that you have promised to your apostles. My peace I gave to you. And we want that peace. And let this journey be a journey of strengthening once again. Every time we are weak, we want to go away from you. We get tired of our spiritual journey, tired of our life, tired of our work or business or misunderstandings. We want you to strengthen us and help us to walk once again. Dear Jesus, stay with us. We want to tell you, just like the disciples of Emmaus, stay with us. We want to meet you, we want to talk to you, and we want to feel you and tell you to the world. My dear friends, when we look at the gospel of the day, the Lord is risen and yet the apostles were not convinced of the resurrection the other day when we were discussing and meditating on the gospel we said the resurrection of Jesus had created two types of reactions among the apostles and everyone who met the risen Lord one is fear and confusion another is joy another is joy one is fear and confusion Mary Magdalene she was afraid she was full of fear and at the same time great joy filled their heart and now the work of the risen Lord is to kill their fear and fill them with peace and joy that is the work of the risen Lord two types of reaction and there can be only one reaction to the risen Lord that is joy that is peace we cannot meet the risen Lord confused we cannot meet him troubled. And he will meet the apostles again and again till he brings them out of their confusion. And how he led Mary Magdalene from her tears to joy. The apostles from their restlessness to peace. And today we see in the gospel Peter makes a decision once again rather a decision that was against the Lord Peter tells I am going fishing it was from there that Jesus called him in the gospel of Matthew chapter 4 verses 19 Peter come on I will make you fisher of men he changed his vocation and now Peter is desperate they feel that they are lost and definitely Peter will be feeling that loss 
more than the other apostles because of the love that Jesus had on Peter. And now Peter tells, I am going back. I am going fishing. And the gospel says, the other apostles also said, we are also coming with you. We are also coming with you. Come, we go back. They wanted to go back to their old ways. From where the Lord called them. It was from there that the Lord called Peter for a greater vocation. For a greater purpose. And now Peter is losing sight of it. Peter is losing sight of it. And that is what every time happens to us. That we, get, that we stay away from the sacraments. For various reasons. All of us have got reasons. I'm busy, I'm working, I'm not able to attend the Mass. Every time you and I stay away from the sacraments, from the Eucharistic Lord, from our personal prayer, from our family prayer, we are going back to our former ways, to our old ways from where the Lord had called us. It is not a journey forward, it is a journey backward. It is a journey backward. And Peter has began that backward journey, not a forward journey. And Jesus again enters his life. They want to go and now the risen Lord is once again there. And once again he calls Peter from there, from that fishing. From that fishing. And the Lord wanted to make him realize that you go away from me, nothing that you have planned will work for you. He's going to the Sea of Galilee. Imagine Peter was an experienced fisherman. He knew the, the length and the breadth and the depth of that sea. Especially if some of us are from uh, that background, fishing background, they know which season, how to fish and when they go, they know they catch. They know their business. And Peter was an experienced fisherman. He knew his job well. And with that courage, he goes back. Okay, let me go back fishing. And fails terribly. Because he is going without the Lord. He is going without the Lord. And the Lord is already there. Every time, that is the beauty of Jesus. Every time, even though we do not recognize him, we do not take him with us, somehow he comes. In English, we say by hook or crook. He travels with us. Stealthily he travels with us, like he travelled with the disciples of Emmaus. They were not aware that he was travelling with them. They were not aware that the risen Lord was speaking to them. And now the same will happen to Peter. The Lord was present. And without him they went. And then the Lord says, What happened? Whole night we tried. What did you get? And Peter must have been confused. This is my trade, my business. And sometimes it happens to us also. Why am I failing again and again in a particular area in which I thought I was a stalwart? I was a pioneer and I failed there terribly. And that is what happened to Peter. He thought he was a great fisherman and now he tells the Lord, whole night we tried and we caught nothing. Nothing, empty-handed. And now Jesus says, shall we go once again? I am coming with you. Peter did not invite him. The Lord said, I am coming with you. But the faith of Peter, once again the Lord come, comes there and Peter tells the Lord, Lord, we tried, we failed, but then at your word, I let down the nets. And once again, from that great catch of, catch of fish, the Lord takes him back to that greater vocation that he had given him in the beginning. 
which we read in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 4 verses 19 onwards. Once again, so today the Lord is telling us how often we have gone back to our old ways and every time we are tired in our spiritual journey, we begin a backward journey in our life, going back to our old ways and things doesn't move. Peter says, we tried whole night, we caught nothing. We are doing everything, there is no peace at home. There is no progress in my business. There is no joy in our relationship. Nothing is progressing. Everything is under a regression. Why? The Lord is absent. The Lord is absent. We have embarked on a journey backward, away from the Lord. Like Peter, I am going fishing. And the Lord is meeting us today. And the question is, are we willing to take him again, like Peter? And trust that things can change once Jesus enters our life. Whole night I tried and it is early morning, already daybreak. And they know that nobody goes fishing in the daybreak. And at his word he says, things will change. And it changed. Great catch of fish. They were sinking in blessing. They were sinking in blessing. And things will change for us personally, for our family, for everything. When we take back the Lord into our lives once again. Let the risen Lord who met Peter wanted to go back to his old ways, wanted to go away from the Lord and brought him back. Let the Lord bring us back once again and let this Easter time be a time to walk towards the risen Lord and walk with the risen Lord. Let us continue our adoration with the hymn.
we spend a few moments in silence with the Lord who is present with us. As we spend this time in silence, let us bring before the Lord those areas of our life wherein we tried again and again and again and failed. Failure was the only result. And we are here to tell the Lord we have tried everything that is possible and nothing happened. We want you to enter. That can be your business, your family, your health, your spiritual life. Like Peter, let us have the confidence in the Lord to tell him we worked the whole night but caught nothing. We have tried Lord again and again but sorry, we tried without you. Without your strength, we have tried in vain and we have come back to you asking for your guidance. As we receive the blessings of the Eucharistic Lord, let us remember all our intentions for which we have been praying and ask the Lord to bless all our intentions, very especially to bless the sick members of our parish community. Let the Eucharistic Lord be their strength when they need Him the most. And let us also remember those who have asked us for our prayers and bring them all before the Eucharistic Lord and ask the Lord to bless them as well, whether they are here present or not. Let us now prepare ourselves for the blessings from the Lord. Let us pray, O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament has left us a memorial of thy passion, grant us, we beseech thee, so to venerate the sacred mysteries of thy body and blood, that we may ever experience within us the fruits of thy redemption. 
could never sustain us world without end.